the Alaska Family Directory website. From the Alaska Department of Education and Early Development, the amount of these grants is $626,000. Second. Is there any public testimony? Any board discussion? Seeing none, we can vote. That motion passes, seven yay, zero nay. Okay. I move to approve ASD Memorandum 010 and authorize the superintendent to accept the title 6B Individuals with Disabilities Education Act Entitlement Grant and Preschool Disabled Incentive Grant for fiscal year 2019 to 20, 2019 to 20 for a total amount of Thirteen million four hundred fifty-two thousand dollars. Second. Is there any public testimony? Any board discussion? See none. We can vote. That motion passes, seven yeas, zero nay. Do any board members want to pull a non-action item for discussion today? Uh, Member Donnelly? Um, the item regarding 1% for art, I move board added to the agenda. All right, well, that'll be memorandum 013. Zero one three. Any others? Okay, do you want to speak to that member, Donnelly? Thank you. Uh, do we do public testimony during, no, not at this time, just at the very end. Okay, thank you, member Donnelly. Um, I just wanted to explain to the public that the proposal that uh, regarding the 1% art absolutely does not prohibit or seek to prohibit non-Alaskan artists from participating in the program as some of the public testimony seemed to imply actually it said that that was what it was addressed it does three things it none of which are to prohibit non-Alaskan artists but it, it only has three resolves one was to uh, Asked the municipality of Anchorage to seek ways to increase participation by Anchorage School District students and residents in applying for the 1% art program. Uh, the second resolve is the board asks the municipality to seek ways to increase any existing artist preferences um, provided in the current uh, art jury evaluation process, including more careful consideration of the proposed transportation expenses of non local proposed submitters. And the final resolve is to, when the uh, municipality does its report to this board of what art they have chosen to put into our schools, because we have no say in it, um, that they would include information regarding the residents of the non-successful proposal submitters and also the successful proposal submitters. So it does not prohibit. Uh, non-Alaskans from participating in the 1% for art program. Any board member comments or questions? Member Vicalis? I just had a quick question, Dave. On um, There's a lot of bold formatting. Is that just for emphasis yes. on those points? Well, are, are you looking at the, the actual resolution is the last page. Yeah, but I'm looking at the pertinent facts. I didn't know if you formatted that specifically for a reason. Oh, the pertinent facts? Yeah, that's it was highlights of the section that uh, of the existing law that I thought were applicable. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Because there's a lot of text there, but I didn't want to not put all the text there, but I wanted to also assist people in trying to figure out where it, the relevant parts were.
Go ahead, Star. Um, uh, I guess I think I know what your purpose is here, Mr. Donnelly, but could you restate that and how this will make a difference or change anything that we can change? Yeah, this program is under the exclusive control of the municipality of Anchorage, although it determines what art goes into our schools. Um, they make a report, and I found the report lacking in some important information, um, identifying what non-successful um, artists applied for, you know, more information, especially about the non-successful applications. Um, and I think that it would, it also encourages that the municipality work with the school district to try to encourage our students to participate in the 1% for Art program. Because I think our students, we have amazing artists out there that are our students, and I really want to encourage them to get in this competition and compete. Given the comments of the art director of this program, are we, I mean, even if we propose this, <clears throat> I don't think this is something that we have control over. I mean, we have to be part of this program. Uh, th that's my question here. And, and maybe Dr. Bishop can answer that too on how this program works in the school district. Can we um, request those? I mean, I'm just not sure what our, our, um, <clears throat> what we're able to do and not able to do to be able to participate in this program. Did you have a comment, Dr. Bishop? I'm, I'm going to, uh, Madam Chair, defer to Tom Roth, who has some additional information in regard to this, uh, perhaps since it's in his realm of through, Thank you, Dr. Bishop. Through, through the, the Vice President. So, there, there, there's some details. I'll ask Mr. Fenisef to make sure I'm straight. The, the, the district does not really have a, a voting piece, Mr. Donnelly is correct. However, as a part of the panel, uh, typically the project manager of the construction project uh, and the school principal are, are involved in the committee process. Yeah, so so there, there is some influence, but again, as, as uh, Member Donnelly uh, mentions, it does not come back to the district or to the board for any type of vetting or approval. Are we suggesting that it comes back to the to the district for vetting or approval? I believe just what the res do you have the resolution before you? Okay. It doesn't really suggest that in the resolution. It's basically um, urging them to consider local artists and then uh, when the report is made to report uh, my understanding uh, where the artists were from that were selected as well as those that were not okay. we're encouraging that right. this is a resolution okay. encourage them to do that correct we we, we don't have okay. policy in regard to this right. uh, madam president okay. this is um, a, a statement from the school board uh, requesting a, a, um, we're resolving that we ask that the municipality do something Okay, thank you. Member Don, or anybody else before go back to him? Uh, member uh, Bellamy. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I guess I have a question, um, maybe for superintendent. Students right now can participate, correct? Anybody can participate in the 1%, is, is that correct? I'll uh, turn it over to Tom Roth, but I believe if you are, um, it's a bid, is it a bid? You're going to have to bid yeah. and be selected. Yeah, so there's a process. You would have to be become a vendor at a time. You know, I mean, there's some some legal things that are incurred possibly right. to be hired. But students aren't excluded from no. the process. No, started. there's not an exclusion of age or students or where you live, no. Okay. In fact, I think, believe that, the curator uh, confirmed that, where he mm -hmm. said it's very open, very, you know, they encourage um, many different people. Uh, Member Donnelly, did you have a follow-up? Um, I just wanted to say that um, 
I did send this resolution to the present director of the 1% for Art program, and she chose not to comment on it. Okay, I'll just add, um, you know, I, I, we talked earlier about our getting things on nine days before for an agenda, so I, I would encourage us to continue to do that. Um, so I won't be supporting this tonight, but I don't have a problem if it goes through the correct, that, that process. Um, but also a part of me just kind of says we have these other issues that I really want to focus on and this year my word is focus, right? Um, we're going to focus on our board goals and um, this might be nice, but I'm not sure it's going to do something substantially more to advance our mission and everything we do takes time and it doesn't mean it's not nice, it doesn't mean it's not good and important, but we can't do everything and uh, I'll continue to um, make my choices based on what I think is going to help focus our, our goals. Uh, any other comments? All right, well, um, well, I don't think we, we don't have anything to vote on, so this will be coming as an agenda item. Right. It will be an action item for next week unless somebody has anything they want to do with it. Okay. All right, any new business by board members? Member Donnelly? Um, I'm really concerned that our decision to hold the meetings on Tuesday has now preempted the live broadcast of our meetings. Um, they're no longer going to be available at all on Channel 9. Is that the result? Through the uh, chair, I believe we've been streaming through YouTube ever since last year, so we haven't had them on that channel for. It, so long. It's, been double. it's in oh, it's double. Been, we've it's been, been doing on both. channel nine. Okay. All last. All. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're uh, um, live stream. Mm -hmm. um, there's, so there's another access uh, point to that. Yeah, I just think it's not the same degree of access for the public to be on YouTube as it is if it's on channel nine on cable because it's just a lot easier to access and to view for the public to, to follow it. I know many people have told me they follow it pretty, you know, and I think that's really an important civics matter where being on Facebook is, is much less. It's not, um, it's not a Facebook or, stream. Or, it's or, not an app stream. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's on the Internet. Okay. So if you have an Internet, um, so you actually don't need cable. You yeah. can go straight from your phone. Right. and actually access it anywhere in the United States. You don't have to be at a TV. You could be anywhere, any location you want to, to look at it. And I think that's great. I still think that it was really accessible to the public to have it on Channel 9. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised it's not there anymore. And I'm just raising that because this is a new business. I'm raising this as, a, as a, I think, a serious concern about folks are no long, longer going to be able to to you know, participate and observe in the meetings through that 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 level of accessibility. Are you wanting us to do something as far as review of our time? We talked about trying it for a year and seeing how if yeah. any issues come up, or just notating that this is one. To I'm just keep notating track of. that when the decision was made to move it from Monday to Tuesday, there was absolutely no notice and no discussion whatsoever that that was going to prevent live television coverage. The, ability of the public to watch these programs live on Channel 9 it was never brought up and never discussed. And I'm concerned about that. I think I would have uh, opposed it at the time if that would have been brought up or acknowledged at that time. Member Mitchell? So the, I, you know, I'm a sample of one, but um, I appreciate the comment. When I go to follow something, I usually, I would go to AS, I would look up ASD streaming, or I've also done with the legislature, I have a hard time finding gavel to gavel these days, so I just look up Alaska legislature streaming, and it takes me to that web page, and then I click the button that says stream, and I, it's, it's totally transparent to me what the platform is that it's streaming on. Is that the way it works for our um, board meetings? So people don't have to go onto YouTube, they just come to our website, they say, I want to watch the meeting live, and they're hooked in. So I, I feel like it's not, I mean, I, I think that's a lot more accessible. We don't have cable at home. I don't ever turn on my TV. It's, 
but I, I understand there are probably some people, just like you said with Facebook, some people don't do it and so they miss out on some things. I, I appreciate you noting it and as we go throughout, we'll continue to see how it's how it's working and I think we should continue to see if this is a good way to do it or, you know, and there's no perfect way, but we'll see how the year goes. I just want to acknowledge that I misspoke by saying Facebook. So many right. things are now live streamed through Facebook. I, I don't know. I realize it's not through Facebook. Yeah. Any other new business? Um, oh, Member Donnelly. <laughs> thank you. No, that's good. At the August 15th meeting, um, uh, the board voted uh, essentially to um, table uh, well, actually, this was at the May 6th meeting to table memo 163 uh, with the provision that there would be action within the next uh, two months. Um, it is scheduled, thank you, Chairman Holloman, to be brought up at August at the August 15th uh, Governance Committee meeting. But I just wanted to point out that it wasn't acted on within the time frame that the tabling occurred. In a, typically, in a tabling motion to a time certain, Thing reappears that whatever was tabled should automatically reappear and so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the meeting and the discussion but I don't whatever happens at the governance committee I don't think overrules the vote of the board as far as it coming back before the board point of information I, I think those are working months yeah. tongue-in-cheek <laughs> anybody else Any um, any other public testimony? Are you ready? Uh, you just be sure to state your name. I'm Marnie Hartel, and I want to thank you and welcome you to a new year. I just want to give a shout out to our educators and students and families that this is the beginning of a great new year. And I'm really excited and geared up for success this year. And I want to give also kudos to Member Donnelly. Um, I was trying to live stream and I rushed over here because the live stream is not working right now through YouTube. And I already talked to Stephen Brown about it. So hopefully we'll get it working um, in the future. But I I'm, I'm actually uh, wanted to mention the opportunity audit really quickly. Um, there is something called the NEA opportunity audit. And it, it's like an in-depth checklist of factors of effective schools to gauge whether in each factor does this not exist, is it not apparent, emerging, improving, or flourishing. So I'm wondering how many of you have heard of or glanced at the NEA Opportunity Audit? We're awesome. not to respond to public testimony. Okay, thank you. Thank you um, um, Superintendent, um, Dr. Bishop. I think there's a lot of great um, parts there with the GPS indicators framework. And the GPS indicator stands for Great Public Schools um, Framework. And these criteria, they might seem really familiar to some of the components found in accreditation criteria that our administrators and educators have worked with before. And the great part about the audit is it allows community members and parents and students to take part in collecting feedback and on where we are now and where we need to be. And the reason I mention it is because we're looking at setting our new district goals. The 2020 goals are now sort of expiring and we need to think about what is the 2025 goals or whatnot. And the Alaska Education Challenge, of course, is another great one. There's already 2025 goals in the Alaska Education Challenge. It did get revised slightly under Alaska's new administration, but it still includes many goals and year timestamps that might be relevant to the school board as we build our new district goals. And as a courtesy, I'll email the school board um, a copy of the opportunity audit so you could take a quick glance. It's a quick scroll, it's like eight pages. Um, it's only seven criteria pages to look at and it's really, it's really insightful and effective. Um, between the NEA opportunity audit and the Alaska Education Challenge, I think those are some really good key resources. But another one to look at is the um, profile of a graduate. And if you haven't Googled that or looked that up, I'd, I encourage you to look at the profile of a graduate. Many districts around the, around the country are looking at using that to frame their district goals. Thanks again and wish you a great new year. Um, thank you again for hearing my testimony. Any other public testimony? Any school board or administrative 
administration comments, Dr. Bishop? Thank you. Uh, I do want to share that uh, there's a stack of cards next to you. And uh, as you're out and about in the community, if uh, there's questions, we uh, highly encourage folks to connect. And there's lots of different ways we want to um, connect with people how they like to be connected with. And uh, so there's lots of information. You can hand this to um, constituents, parents, kids, whomever you'd like. But it really talks about all the ways that um, they can receive information and because we want to deliver it how they like to receive it and we have uh, lots of different avenues uh, for information and uh, just uh, we used to the this is an update of the card that looks like a cell phone when we first put out our app so this is just um, the second uh, rendition of that uh, to encourage uh, folks to get information and then of course on your app or other things you can decide to get push notifications or not you know you don't have to be um, bothered if you don't want push notifications but um, that uh, we provided those for everyone and then I uh, wanted to share with the board that um, Dr. Stock will be in charge the next two days I am available by telephone uh, we have uh, been requested to testify um, and actually, it's the work of Jenny Knudsen and her team with SEL, but um, they requested the superintendent to sit on a panel in the state of Utah uh, with the governor and legislature and other school personnel to create policy in their state around SEL. And uh, the work of Anchorage School District uh, has been longstanding, over 15 years of this work. And uh, just some of our programs and what we've done. So we uh, were requested by... Um, Mr. Schreiber, who's the lead of Castle, to travel there. They're going to pay for it. And I um, travel tomorrow, sit for a day uh, on their panel, answer questions, and then travel back Thursday night, back to work on Friday. But it's an honor to uh, represent the good work of the district that has been going on for many, many years and hope that we can encourage um, social emotional learning uh, in other states as well and in other school districts. So I wanted to share that with the board. Thank you. Anyone else, Star? Hey, we didn't uh, really get a chance to talk about the um, conference or accelerated board training that Alisa, um, Alicia, El Alyssa, um, Bacalis and I <laughs> attended. And uh, we are uh, putting our heads together and are going to come back with a board training of the information that we gathered at Harvard. It was amazing to bring all these people together. The first time that they've ever done anything like this, they did it through the Council of Great City Schools. They have a lot of executive companies that come in for executive education, and this was the first time they did a board uh, education, and um, definitely some good things, and we will be getting together to be able to pass that on to the board. I, uh, Madam Chair, I, I want to clarify, too, to add that uh, the funds that uh, were granted to participate in the Harvard um, Business Education School of uh, Business uh, were provided uh, through philanthropic um, work out of Boston itself. Uh, the Shaw Foundation, uh, the people, uh, husband and wife who started Wayfair, uh, company believe in education and through Elisa Vakalis's uh, participation on Council Great City Schools uh, the chair of their board uh, had befriended her and um, she shared that there's no way we could afford it we've gone to our community too much through the earthquake and everything and this uh, family stepped forward and paid for the three members so I want that to be highly um, notable public thank them but also let folks know that our attendance and tuition uh, it is Bendy uh, was paid for by uh, this uh, group to further the education yeah and uh, yes and thank you um, Dr. Bishop for uh, reminding me of that. That's wonderful. Anybody else? Mm. Uh, we're on school board and administration comments. Member Darling? Yeah, at the upcoming uh, governance meeting on the 15th, um, I hope we'll be in a position, I'm, my current intent is to move to discharge the uh, national anthem policy um, and my current proposal will be to make it a once a month event that the national anthem would be played the first school day of the month and uh, that's what I'm going to move at the uh, governance committee meeting all right uh, looks like we are finished up today thank you all we'll have a great start
uh, to the school year. So, uh, meeting adjourned. <coughs> motion to the captain. Oh, motion. does somebody want to move to adjourn? Thank you, Member Vigalis. Second? Move to adjourn. Second. Any opposition? All of the above. Yeah. All right, consensus has it. Thank you. Bye, Star. <laughs>